Hepatitis refers to the inflammation of the liver, usually due to viral infections, but sometimes due to exposure to toxins, alcohol misuse, and immune diseases. In this video, we'll dive deep into understanding hepatitis A, and this will be the first of a series of videos about hepatitis. Hepatitis A is a highly contagious liver infection caused by the hepatitis A virus, which is a non-enveloped single-stranded RNA virus belonging to the family of picoanaviridae. The virus attacks the liver and causes inflammation, leading to various health complications. The primary mode of transmission of hepatitis A virus infection is the fecal-oral route. Parenteral transmission has been reported in illicit intravenous drug use and following the transfusion of contaminated blood or blood products. Hepatitis A infection is more common among those of low socioeconomic status, where crowded living and poor hygienic standards are likely to facilitate viral spread through close personal contact. It is highly contagious and can spread through close personal contact with an infected person for instance, among household contact and child daycare centers. Sharing personal items with an infected individual can increase the risk of transmission. Sexual contact with someone who has the hepatitis A virus. Traveling to regions with high hepatitis A prevalence. Some countries have a higher incidence of hepatitis A, particularly in areas with poor sanitation and hygiene practices. It may be acquired by the ingestion of contaminated water, milk, or foods, particularly raw or undercooked shellfish such as mussels oysters, clams, fresh fruits, or raw vegetables. Occupational risks, for example, in laboratory or sewage workers. Following ingestion, hepatitis A replicates in the small intestine, migrates to the liver via the portal circulation, and infects hepatocytes through interactions with membrane-bound receptors. Mature hepatitis A virions are then excreted into bile and feces. Hepatitis A follows four clinical phases. The first phase is the incubation period before clinical symptoms of hepatitis A manifest. It ranges between two and six weeks with an average of four weeks. Prodromal is the second phase. It is the early stages of the disease that is characterized by flu-like symptoms like fever, joint pain, and rash. Icteric is the third phase that is characterized by anorexia, abdominal pain, change in bowel habit, and jaundice. Convalescent is the fourth phase. It represents a recovery period, as the body returns to normal and symptoms subside. Symptoms like malaise may last for months. Hepatitis A presents with a wide range of symptoms, varying from mild to severe. Abdominal pain and discomfort, often on the upper right quadrant where the liver is located. Nausea and vomiting. Loss of appetite leading to unintended weight loss. Fatigue and weakness. Jaundice, which is the yellowing of the skin and eyes due to liver dysfunction. This occurs when the liver is unable to process bilirubin, a waste product from the breakdown of red blood cells. Pruritus. Dark urine and pale or clay-colored stools. Younger children may not exhibit any signs of infection. Around 10% develop jaundice. Signs elicited by the physician include. Right upper quadrant tenderness. Jaundice. Hepatomegaly or enlargement of the liver in about 85% of the cases. Splenomegaly in 15% of the cases. And lymphadenopathy in about 5% of the cases. The diagnosis usually begins with history and physical examination to elicit some of the signs and symptoms. Then samples such as blood, stool, bile, liver biopsy and serum are taken for laboratory diagnosis. Tests done include antigen detection using PCR and nucleic acid hybridization assay. Detection of antibody to hepatitis A of the IgM type, which is detected early after infection and is present by the onset of clinical disease. It serves as the indicator of acute viral infection or recent exposure to hepatitis A. The level of anti-hepatitis A IgM peaks shortly after infection and then gradually declines and becomes undetectable by 8 to 12 weeks. In contrast, IgG type anti-hepatitis A gradually rises and persists indefinitely for many years. It serves as useful indicator of past infection or immunity. Antibody detection can also be done by enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Liver function test is also done. Variable but consistent elevations of biochemical indices of liver injury such as elevated serum aminotransferase, alkaline phosphatase value and hyperbilirubinemia are evident in nearly all affected individuals. 
In young patients, hepatitis A virus infection is usually a self-limited disease that does not become chronic and rarely results in death. Management is generally supportive during the acute illness. The patient is advised on adequate rest and hydration with oral fluids. Alcohol and hepatotoxic drugs should be avoided. For nausea and vomiting, metoclopramide or cyclozine can be given if there is no significant liver impairment. Chlorophenamine can be prescribed for pruritus in the absence of liver impairment. Pre-exposure prevention of hepatitis A infection can be accomplished by the administration of immunoglobulin as passive immunization or by administration of one of the currently licensed vaccines for active immunization. Inactivated or live attenuated vaccine confers 90% of prevention. The hepatitis A vaccine provides long-term protection against the virus. It's recommended for travelers visiting countries with a high hepatitis A risk, children and adults living in regions with a high prevalence of the virus and individuals with chronic liver diseases or compromised immune systems. Persons exposed to hepatitis A can be offered administration of serum immune globulin to prevent hepatitis A infection or reduce its extent and severity. This type of preventive intervention is known as post-exposure prophylaxis. Personnel hygiene and sanitation should be observed. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water, especially before eating or preparing food. Avoid eating raw or undercooked food, and drink only clean and safe water. Keep your living areas clean and ensure proper sewage disposal. Be cautious while traveling. Research hepatitis A risk in the destination country, and take necessary precautions. And follow your provider's instructions and attend regular checkups to monitor your progress. Although complications are uncommon, those with compromised immune systems are more likely to experience a severe complication of hepatitis A infection. Acute liver failure is the most serious complication. It occurs when the liver suddenly stops functioning properly, leading to a rapid deterioration of liver function. This condition requires immediate medical attention and may necessitate a liver transplant. Hepatitis A can cause colstasis, which is a condition where the flow of bile from the liver is disrupted. This can result in the accumulation of bile acids in the liver, leading to jaundice, itching, and pale stools. In some cases, individuals may experience a relapse of symptoms after an initial improvement. This relapse can occur within a few weeks of the initial infection and may be accompanied by a recurrence of jaundice, fatigue, and other symptoms. Hepatitis A can lead to fulminant hepatitis, a life-threatening condition characterized by rapid liver failure. This condition requires immediate medical intervention. Extrahepatic manifestations can occur. Hepatitis A can also affect organs and systems outside of the liver. It can cause complications such as glomerulonephritis, pancreatitis, and blood-related disorders. And finally, hepatitis A can trigger an autoimmune response in some individuals leading to autoimmune hepatitis. Hepatitis A virus infection is a self-limited disease of the liver that is transmitted mainly by the fecal oral route. Remember, prevention is key. Practice good hygiene, get vaccinated, and be mindful of the food and water you consume. Thank you for watching. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more health-related content. Stay healthy, stay informed.